Hi, welcome to my channel. Welcome to my beauty book collection. I am absolutely fascinated with vintage beauty. I have been collecting vintage books about beauty for at least a decade. I have a pretty huge collection of authentic books from ranging from the 1930s to the 1970s. But my absolute favorite like sweet spot for researching vintage beauty is the 1940s and the 1950s. So I just think it's so fascinating to look at these books from a time before there was YouTube, before there was TikTok, or you could just ask Google how to do makeup. This was how <laughs> women had to communicate their beauty secrets with each other. So I think it's such a fascinating first-hand account where we can really see what the women of the past were thinking and feeling and what their daily routines were and all their habits and all their little secret beauty tips and tricks that have been lost to time and some of them are really amazing tricks still. So I thought it would be fun in this video to take you through my entire library of vintage books. I'll be telling you how you can find books like these for yourself. Honestly, the hardest part about tracking them down is you really need to know the title and the author. So I'll have a list below this video of the books that I love the most in my collection and you'll see every single book in my collection. Some of these books are worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars now. They get really crazy on eBay as far as the pricing. Uh, even though a lot of them just went for like 50 cents at the time that they were published, they're now worth hundreds. So I am very proud of my collection that I've spent a long time curating and I'm so excited to share it with you. Before we dive in though, I feel like people tend to kind of idolize the past sometimes and so I want to talk a little bit about the good, the bad, and the ugly of these vintage books. Um, one thing that I will say is good is that they all address working women and homemakers. It's not just the stay-at-home women of the 1950s that we tend to picture. Um, there were a ton of working women and these books absolutely spoke to them. But other than that, there's no diversity in these books, which is really, really heartbreaking. They all have the central message that all women can be beautiful, but it's a little bit more toxic than today's messages of body positivity and all women are beautiful. So it's kind of an interesting distinction there, but they tended to equate beauty with effort in the 1940s and 50s. So all of these books are all about like, you, anybody, everybody can be beautiful, but you gotta put in the work. <laughs> And so these books, I mean, just pages and pages and pages of tips on how women can create beauty if they weren't born with it, things like that. So that's just kind of a different perspective that I wanted to mention. So all that said, I take these books with a pretty big grain of salt. Some of it's downright offensive, some of it's downright hilarious, but reading it all in a modern lens is just so fascinating to me. And I think it's really important that we keep books like this alive. Like this is such a crucial part of women's history and just what it was like to be a woman in that time period. And it's so fascinating to read directly from the resources of the era rather than like one blog post that everybody just keeps re-quoting <laughs> about the past times. Like if you want to learn about the past, get a first-hand resource like this. So I'm going to show you my entire collection, tell you how you can acquire books like this if you want, also how you can read some of these books for free online right now, and share all of my tips and tricks that I have gained from the beautiful vintage sisters of our past. All right, so here is my beloved bookshelf that is just full of vintage treasures. And starting out on top, I just want to quickly talk about magazines. So, so fun to read vintage magazines. It is such a time capsule. I don't have any women's beauty magazines. That would be really fun to have. But I did get this lot of house and garden. So it's a lot about decorating. I mean, I would live in that place 1 million percent. <laughs> I love the decorating ideas. And this batch I have, the years range from like the late 50s. So you can go on eBay and type in like lot of... 1950s magazines and see what comes up. It's so fun and so interesting. Just the ads alone are absolutely worth flipping through these old magazines. Really fun. Kind of hard to find them in good condition because obviously the covers want to fall off, but they exist. They're out there. They've been in people's, you know, attics for 70 years, so we can go save them. I also have some little booklets up here, so I'll show you these. I think these are really fun things to try to find. So this one is about your telephone personality, 
um, how to sound on the phone, how to speak cordially on the phone, just like a completely, completely lost art, mostly geared towards secretaries um, and people answering the phone in like an office setting, but also about personal phone calls, so that's really fun. This is really cute. This is guidelines for being a secretary, like how to keep your manicure nice while you're typing. Absolutely so much fun to read. This is probably my favorite. It's called It's Fun to Write Letters by Jane Eaton, and it has just little advice for charming suggestions for writing letters. It's from 1955, and so it's like tips for good storytelling, like how to make an interesting way of sharing a story in a letter, how to use interesting wording and sound conversational. Just, again, a relic from an old time when people actually used to write letters, so really, really cool book. And then I recently found these three catalogs at an antique store, and these are really cool because these are kind of behind the scenes um, catalogs that a woman who sold Avon would get. So it's about the prizes that she could earn if she did a lot of sales. It's about new products coming out that she can sell. It's just so interesting to me to see what it would be like to be an Avon lady in 1956. Just talking about the products that were available, the perks that were available, and inspiring these women who were kind of like the original girl bosses. Um, I mean, look at them. And there were some gentlemen as well. But inspiring these people who sold Avon and made Avon what it is. So, so fascinating to me to see their real pictures, hear about their sales. They were selling about $660 in three months, which is the equivalent of like $7,000 in three months. So, just a really interesting little time capsule. Okay, coming down to this top shelf, these are all of my beloved treasured beauty books. So I'll just take you through them left to right. They're actually organized by size, not by author. I don't know if that bothers any fellow book lovers out there. <laughs> but this is really cool. This is one that's still in print, so you can still get yourself a copy of this. And it is the Westmore Brothers. They were the makeup artists of the day in Hollywood in the 50s. And it's all of their makeup and hair tips, everything they did on the actual starlets of the day. So if you love vintage film, this is so cool to see. It also has a really fun quiz section, like a very long quiz. So you can judge yourself and see how you stack up against um, 1950s starlets beauty regimes. So this one's really cool. It's great that it's still in production. It's not my all-time favorite, but you can literally order this one on Amazon. So that's pretty, pretty handy. Next is a really, really special find. This was from an old vintage course called The Charming Woman. I don't know if you can see the lettering on there. And the whole point of this is that it was a course that you would do. I'm not sure if it was in person or how it worked, but it's divided into like little sections. And each section has days in it, and each day has different topics that were covered. So like this is the 18th day. They talked about skincare for mature skin. They talked about diet. All of these beauty books talk about diet. <laughs> so I was really lucky to find this set all together. Sometimes you can find just like one of these little booklets, but they are, are meant to be all bound together like this. So some lady took this charm course and really kept all of her materials. <laughs> and it's just a really special course because they had experts like Helena Rubinstein, who was huge in the beauty world. Um, I believe the guy that does the diet, Frankie Van, was a huge like health expert of the day. There's just all these amazing people weighing in. The only thing that's a little annoying is you can't just flip to like the skincare section because each day you got like a little miniature lesson. So the most fun way to do this book is to really take it day by day. Like on the 15th day you read this portion and it just kind of pieces together everything they thought a woman needed to know about beauty, exercise, clothing, being well-groomed, charming, all of those topics. So, so fascinating. Next is Beauty, Glamour, and Personality by Earn and Bud Westmore. So these are those same makeup gurus of the day that I was talking about. And this book is vintage, not still in production. There are the Westmore brothers. They were the makeup men of Hollywood. This came out in 1947. So this is really cool to see 
again, just like firsthand actual piece from the period, not a reprint of makeup tips from the 40s from these two gentlemen. So it talks about everything, hairdo, makeup, perfume, all that good stuff. Really beautiful, really cool book. The art is so fun. They always talk about posture a ton in these books. It's supposed to be the instant shortcut to looking your best. And all about glamour in this one. Next I have a few sort of like catalogs. Of course this one was a must because I love Cinderella. But this is basically meant for hairstylists of the time. So this is in instructing hairstylists on how to do the hairstyles on their clients and talking about products and they might want to purchase, how to just manage the business side of their industry well. All of these little products that they could buy are so fun to look at. So that's really great to get some hair <laughs> inspiration, but I just think it's so pretty. And this was originally priced at $7.50 for Cinderella's Beauty Hints. And this came out in the 50s. And a couple more books along those lines that are geared towards hairstyling and insiders in the beauty industry. The Beauty Book of Knowledge, which apparently I think came out yearly. I have the 13th and the 14th edition. And they just talk about all the insider information, how to dye your client's hair, how to give them a fabulous spa experience at your hair salon. And it's just so fun to read about. Okay, next is this glorious book called Glorify Yourself. Written by Eleanor King. She was an actress who was in movies, I think, in mainly the 20s and 30s, and then she became a beauty consultant. So the beauty gurus of the day were often attached to Hollywood in some way. And this is just a complete gem, talking about all of her tips for facial radiance, a beautiful body, perfect posture, how to be well-dressed, and how to have a poised personality. This one was originally published in 1942, so it's kind of on the earlier end of my collection. I find that the beauty books from the 40s had a much different tone than the 50s because it was a darker time. You know, there was war and everybody was concerned with that. It was a lot about how you can conserve, how you can contribute, and almost how being beautiful was seen as a duty to lift spirits, to lift your own spirits, and to keep everybody in fighting spirit in the 1940s. So this is just full of her tips, her insight. Talks about closet, what she should have in her closet. They were big on like kind of a capsule wardrobe where everybody should have certain staples in their closet. And talks about weight and exercises, of course, they all do. And really, really cool book. You can find copies of this on eBay. This is the beauty book. It, I think, has become the most famous vintage beauty book that people have heard of. And as a result, it's kind of the hardest and most expensive to get your hands on. But this is by Anita Colby. She was also a vintage Hollywood starlet who turned into a beauty consultant. Worked with a lot of modeling agencies and things like that. And she wrote this beauty book with all of her tips and tricks. She was like the guru, so it was a big deal. And this one was originally published in 1952. So it has kind of that air of optimism of the 1950s. You can do absolutely anything you set your mind to. There's a 14-day diet in here where she spells out exactly what to have at each meal, which is so fascinating. It's really not much food at all. It's like a 1,000 calories a day. Um, not something a doctor would probably recommend nowadays. But this is really doable to take it as like a daily beauty school. It's four weeks long and she has each day of the four weeks a little section to read, just a couple pages, beauty tips and tricks, and it is so fun. Also it's really charming because all these little illustrations she did herself. So it's just really cute, I feel like. And there's like a little self-assessment at the end of each week, because any term school, of course, you've got to grade yourself. <laughs> and this has just become like the definitive beauty book. It can go for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. It's a little bit crazy how the pricing has escalated. But if you set an alert on eBay and watch for it, it will occasionally come up cheaper than that. So this is definitely one to watch out for if you're a true vintage beauty collector. It's kind of like the go-to book. Next we have the Family Circle Guide to Beauty. Another really cool sort of catalog style insider info about the beauty industry. 
makeup, skincare, how to do your own manicures, exercises, of course. Really cute. We have Glamour, the film, fashion, and beauty book. So this has specifically the secrets of the stars, especially Marilyn Monroe. I can't find the publication year on this one, but it's really fun because it has like little interviews with the stars and it's just so special to see their individual little tips and tricks that they were sharing. And of course, great pictures all throughout. Totally stunning book. Very treasured. This one might be one of my most offensive books, I feel like. I personally, like I said, I try to take these with a grain of salt, but this one offended me a bit. <laughs> it's called Always Ask a Man by Arlene Dahl, and it's, quote, the key to femininity. Um, she, she again, was an actress. This, is, this book came out a bit later. I think this was in the 60s, 1965. And basically her whole thesis statement in this book is that we should always ask men for their opinion and, and whatever men like, that is the feminine thing to do. So I would say this is one of the most dated mindsets out of all of these books because as you can imagine, that's a little bit offensive to the modern woman's sensibilities nowadays. But it is a very interesting read if you want to take it with a grain of salt. Um, but she has a very funny writing style where she's just a little bit sassy and has very strong opinions on how women should be living. This is a book by John Robert Powers. He was one of the major authors on this subject of the day. That's him right there. This one came out in 1960. But I will say he always credits his assistant, who I suspect really kind of wrote these books. Um, but she does get credit, and they actually are some of my favorite books. But he was a... He had a stable of models in the time, and his girls were supposed to be some of the best, most beautiful models in Hollywood. And it's actually still a school. I don't think it's as much for modeling now as it is like public speaking and whatnot. But they were called the Powers Girls, and they were his models that had that extra special polish to them. So this was teaching the average woman how she could be just as charming and beautiful and lovely as a quote powers girl. I want to show you this. This is another one of the daily diets that's very <laughs> low on calories by modern standards. Um, but all of these books addressed what to do if you were overweight and also what to do if you were underweight, which is kind of interesting. And they also talk about hair, beauty, skin, all of the basics. Here's another book by John Robert Powers in my collection. Again, he always attributes his assistant and I really like this one. I think you can read this one online as well. Um, but this one especially focuses on charm. This came out in 1954, so it was before the one I just showed you. And it really goes into the details of what he teaches in his beauty school and his modeling school. And it's just so cool because women, you know, who didn't live in New York City had access to all of this beauty information that there was, like, no other way that they could have gotten back then, you know? So it's kind of like beauty for the people, <laughs> and it has ideas for how to budget for your wardrobe, how much money you should expect to spend and all the staples, wardrobe ideas for if you're a homemaker, if you are a career woman. I will say every single one of these books addresses tips for career women. Um, it has ideas, of course, for hair and some pictures. So I really love this one. This is one of my favorites. Secrets of Charm. And it's just so gloriously 1950s. This is another special book in my collection. This one's called Lady Be Lovely. This one is really hard to track down for some reason. But it's written by this lovely lady here, Edith Thornton McLeod. Published in 1955. She says, every woman, every woman can perfect her personality, add beauty to her face and figure, thus adding loveliness to her living. So like all of these book, books, it kind of has the general thesis statement that every single woman can be lovely. <laughs> Broken down really simply into talking about charm, figure, face, makeup, hair, and clothes. And it's got these really cute pictures all throughout. I love when they have real pictures of real women from the times. Um, how to shave, how to do all the beauty care 
I love when they break down a good bath routine like this one does. Has a lot of tips for taking a bath to refresh yourself and rejuvenate yourself. And of course, get clean. <laughs> But this is such a good one. This one I was able to buy through the library system. So that's another way that you can try to find some of these books. Like when literally no one is checking these books out for decades, they're usually willing to sell them. So you can go talk to your librarian about some of these titles and authors that I'm talking about. And they can help you track them down sometimes. So that's really cool. Uh, this one's really cute. That Certain Something, The Magic of Charm by Arlene Francis. This one's all about charm specifically. These books are all very concerned with being charming because charm is that certain something that everyone can cultivate but not many people do. This was copyrighted in 1960. Talks all about what is charm, how you can have it, and just more about like analyzing your personality and um, how you can bring more charming traits to your interactions. That one's a little bit different. And I love when they have a quiz at the end or throughout. <laughs> Quizzes are so much fun. It's like, it's like reminds me of a teenage magazine. Then we have Diane von Furstenberg's Book of Beauty. I'm sure you probably know who she is. Famous designer. And she wrote this Book of Beauty in 1976. So this is one of my later ones in my collection. But she has a really interesting perspective on life. So it's kind of fun to see that. Other than that, it's the sort of things that are in all of these books, like exercises, activities, suggestions for being healthy and therefore beautiful. Uh, she talks about that a lot. You are what you eat. And some pictures of her in the 70s doing what she did that made her so iconic. So, very fun. I found that one at an antique store. This is one of my absolute most favorite books in the collection. The Family Circle's complete book of beauty and charm. I had to do some math on the Roman numerals, but this came out in 1951. So it's got that early 50s approach. And this really focuses on the importance of feeling beautiful and cultivating a feeling of beauty and cultivating the feeling that you are worth the effort that they're going to recommend you put into it because... All of these books take a lot of effort, and you have to put all of these different beauty steps into your daily routine. So this is kind of interesting that this is one of the few books that really talks about believing you deserve it. You deserve to feel beautiful. You deserve to take this little time for yourself each day. Um, they talk about, like, it's never too late. These books are all geared at women of all ages, and the importance of just learning to like yourself. So I really like this one. I think it's kind of unique in that regard. Um, but then it goes into a lot of detail on all of the different beauty techniques. Makeup, skincare, hair care, all the usual suspects. And I think I forgot to shout out the author specifically. It's, it's by Family Circle, but the authors were Mary Milo and Jean King Marshall. So I highly recommend this one. If you can find it, it's pretty rare to see it pop up on eBay, but I have seen it once, <laughs> so it can be found. I hope you cannot see all of the dust that I'm stirring up right now. This is one of the most special ones in my library. It's called How to Be Attractive by Joan Bennett. Again, she was a movie star of the era, and this came out in the 40s. Let's see which year. There she is, like, what a doll, just girl bossing at her desk in the 40s. <laughs> this came out in 1944. So this focuses a lot on wartime beauty and it talks a lot about doing our duty. See it even says here that this book was produced in compliance with government regulations so that it wasn't hogging any resources during the war. Um, and she really draws a lot on military symbolism. She talks about like standing straight like a soldier having that sense of duty, seeing your beauty as a almost like a weapon. So this is just a really unique one because it was such a unique time in history that everyone was dealing with this sort of unprecedented situation. And a lot of women were working in factories and ways that they had never worked before. So she talks about beauty for factory girls how they should be careful about their grooming, but also safe. It was really important that they had their hair out of the way of machinery and things like that. Um, she talks about women being 
sturdy, the importance of being healthy and sturdy so that you can do your part, you know, taking care of the family, working in a factory, whatever women were doing while the war was going on. So this is a really, really unique book. One of my favorite sections in here, she talks all about the deliciousness of a bubble bath and how you can heal, like, any malady with a bubble bath. <laughs> so that's a really great one to check out if you can find it. I felt really lucky that I found that one. This is kind of a quirky one. This is written by Miss America from 1965. It's called That Girl in Your Mirror by Vonda K. Van Dyke. And she was kind of a character. Um, I would say this is mostly a religious book. She goes into a lot of detail about her religion as a Christian and how she felt like that influences, again, the sense that women had like a duty to be beautiful. And she just talks a lot about religion in this book. So it's very unusual for a beauty, beauty book of the era. Usually, I would say none of them mention religion at all. They might mention like a higher power a couple times, but this one specifically talks about Christianity. And just kind of random. I think this was from 1965, or at least that's when she was Miss America. And I found that one in an antique shop. Then I have a few that are still in reprint today, so you'll be able to track these down if you want. Beauty, What It Is, and How to Retain It, which is so fun. It was written anon anonymously by a lady, and this was from 1873. So as you can imagine, this is a really unique one, and it's very fun that you can still get it and paw through this one if you want to track that down. Then we have How to Dress for Success by Edith Head. She was the guru on gorgeous fashion in Hollywood. If you've seen any Hitchcock films, um, all the fabulous outfits that Grace Kelly would wear, usually engineered by Edith Head. She was just an absolute genius with wardrobe. So this is very cool to get her insight on how to dress, dress your whole family. <laughs> um, and again, that's still in production. So how to dress for success. And then this one is called Better Than Beauty, A Guide to Charm by Helen Valentine and Alice Thompson. And this is, again, kind of tackling beauty through the lens of charm, the importance of being charming, how your beauty can add to making you a charming person. So important in that era. And this one originally came out in 1938. It was reprinted in 2002, and so it's still in circulation, but very interesting to get that 1930s approach. And finally, we come to my personal favorite in this whole beauty collection, um, unfortunately, I think it must be a lot of people's <laughs> favorites because it's pretty expensive and hard to find. Also, unfortunately, it's paperback. I don't know if you noticed, all of these were hardcover, and that is why they have survived so well through the decades. The paperbacks really fall apart. So, I have this copy, which had fallen apart and was missing about 50 pages in the middle. Luckily, one of my friends kindly let me borrow her copy so I could read those missing pages because the suspense was killing me. <laughs> it's like mid-exercise and it just started falling apart. So I did get a great deal on this because of the poor condition. You can find a lot of copies of this book in such bad condition that they are well-priced. But if you can find it, complete. That is the holy grail and I was lucky enough to find it recently. So it's just called The Handbook of Beauty. The author is Constance Hart. And if you type that into eBay and save it as a search, it will notify you whenever it becomes available. And I, I acquired this broken edition, and then I looked for it for years, and I finally found this edition. So sometimes it can go for hundreds of dollars, but I was able to find this one for a steal. It was like 20 bucks or something. So sometimes people either, I don't know if they don't realize the value of these books, they're just like cleaning out the attic, or maybe they just want to sell it fast but it can be done that you can find an affordable copy. Like most of these, they used to be library books. This one hasn't been checked out since 1964. So amazing. But the reason this is my absolute favorite out of all of these books is she breaks down every single thing that she recommends. It's like the typical book talks about hair, skin, makeup. But she breaks down every single recommendation into a doable... Well, it's up to you if it's doable, <laughs> but she breaks it down into a daily routine and like a shopping list and like there's so many lists in this book. Let me show you some. Like lists of supplies that you need. She's talking about baths versus showers here. I love the section on baths. 
um, stretching. But yeah, at the end of each section, there's a little schedule. So you could, in theory, like incorporate this into your own daily schedule. So she talks about what to do in the morning, during the day, and at night. She also tends to talk about two versions of everything. One for the woman working in an office and one for a homemaker. So this is just so fascinating because she really plays on my love of lists. <laughs> and I just think it, it helps so much that she broke it down into like little doable steps and routines because all of these other books are just like do all these million things and they don't really explain how to do it. So this one is very, very special. And lastly, this was a sweet gift, but it's the things women should know, a woman should know about beauty. This one's also still in circulation. It's a modern book from 2005, but it breaks down a lot of tips from different starlets. And a lot of the, the advice that you can find in these books has kind of been trickled into modern books like this. So that's also an option. Really, really cute. And that's it for the beauty-specific books. I wish we had more time because I'd love to go into some of my other vintage collections. I have relationship books, health-specific books. Okay, we do have to talk about one author in here in case it takes a while to get to the sequel video, but Mirror, Mirror on the Wall by Gaylord Hauser. He was a specifically health-focused beauty guru of the day. He was responsible for... There he is. He was responsible for um, beauty farms. If you ever heard of that concept where a woman would go on like almost like summer camp and it wasn't just about weight loss. It often had a lot to do with weight loss and healthy eating, but also just beauty and relaxation. Honestly, I would love to go to a beauty farm. It sounds so relaxing. <laughs> they would just like drink smoothies and sun themselves. It was so great. But he was the original guru who kind of invented that. He cared a lot about longevity, beauty, how we could eat to increase our health. And he wrote several books on the topic. So I really like this one, Mirror Mirror on the Wall. It has beauty recipes in it for everything from foods to eat to like homemade skincare treatments that you could do. And he talks more about what would go on at a beauty farm, which to me is just so fascinating. I could read about that topic forever. Um, how the women would like dress up and go have dinner and play cards in the evenings. It's just so fascinating to me. So I really recommend this author if you're interested in the concepts of health back then and how they related to beauty. Some of it has been thoroughly debunked, <laughs> but some of it's a really interesting take on the beauty question from that era. This one came out in 1960. So anyway, I won't go into too much detail of the rest of these about health. I also have homemaking books. I think those are so, so fascinating to see like the daily schedule of women from a bygone era. So let me know if you'd like a future video on that. I also have a lot of cookbooks that would be fun to show you. And I just love old books. <laughs> and I cannot lie, they are so fascinating to me. Okay, I just realized I had one of the books on my nightstand. I hope this is the only one that I forgot to share in this video, but I wanted to quickly talk about it too because it is one of my favorites. It is called Individually Yours. I've been looking forever for a copy and I finally got one. Um, Individually Yours by Celeste Carlyle. And the publication on this one, 1951. And this one is another one that really appealed to me because it talks a lot about individualism and how you can have your own individual brand of beauty, which is a little bit unique for the, the era. Um, and I just really like the writing. It's just a really fun read. Like The chapter titles are just adorable. It's just a really cute little book. Um, so I would definitely add this one to your watch list. Like I keep saying, you just go on eBay or Etsy, type in the search terms individually yours, Celeste Carlyle, and then save the search and they will email you if and when a book appears. And you can kind of get a feel for the pricing that way. When it comes up, take a look at the price and see if you're comfortable with that or not. And that's how I've pretty much acquired all of these books. The real trick is knowing the title of the book and the author. Because if you just type in like 1950s beauty book, you're going to get 100 copies of Black Beauty. <laughs> so it really helps. I hope I'm really helping you if you're interested because you're going to have all these titles that you can search now and it makes the search a lot less complicated. And if you know of any beauty books that I didn't mention, please let me know because the main struggle for me is finding these titles and these authors to research because there aren't a lot of resources like this. 
And I just want to say, if you do start acquiring some vintage books, please, please, please read them. Lend them to friends that you can trust. <laughs> um, use them, think about them, talk about them. I am always, always game to talk about vintage beauty books if you want to message me in chat. But I just want to keep these books alive because they really are special. And lastly, if you are interested in seeing my vintage collection of homemaking books, the schedules of women in the past eras, um, or cookbooks, I love vintage cookbooks, especially as they pertain to party planning, like the level of extraness was just incredible. So I would love to do videos on those too if you're interested. So that is it from me on my very beloved topic. Thank you for indulging an English major, a vintage beauty lover and sharing about something that I just find endlessly fascinating. And I hope you learned something, got some ideas, maybe just inspired to collect whatever niche thing lights you up the way vintage books light me up because I just think that makes life so much more fun. So wishing you plenty of luck in your own hunting and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!